order the May 2019 meeting of the Sycamore Township Zoning Commission. My name is Roger Friedman, the chairman. I call on Mr. Meese to call the roll. Certainly. Ms. Flanagan? Here. Mr. Barrett? Present. Mr. Friedman? Present. Mr. Roos? Present. I'm here as well. Good. We have a full compliment this evening. Um, the first order of business is the approval of the minutes from the March 11th, 2019 meeting. We've had the minutes to review. Uh, any additional comments? Uh, if not, if someone would make a motion to approve the minutes. I move we approve the minutes from March 11th, 2019. Second. Second by Mr. Meese. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the minutes are approved. Uh, we have one old matter that apparently has been continued to June the 10th, 2019, per the applicant's request, so that will be continued. I also note that there was another item on the agenda for new business this evening, uh, 2000, case number 2019 06 P2, uh, which was an application for property at 8167 Montgomery Road. Um, Many people refer to it as a greeter's application, and that is also being continued at the applicant's request. Correct, Mr. Owen? Yes, sir. Okay. Not continued, it's been here. Right, right. <laughs> but uh, they ask that it be continued over at uh, um, their request. So that will be done. Uh, so the first item on the agenda for this evening is case number 2019 05 P2. The applicant is Paul Shirley, Pelican Studio, 8608 Blue Ash Road, and the request is for a PUV2. Uh, Mr. Holbert, if you'd give us an update on that. Yes, sir. So I, I would like to do this for the audience's sake so that you understand the process. I've had a couple requests in regards to how does this all work. So staff will make a determination on how the application is to be applied and what the steps are. In this case, um, this specific case which is up in front of you is the PUD2 and the other cases are also the PUD2 or a major adjustment. That process involves two major steps. One is to go in front of the Zoning Commission. The Zoning Commission can then make one of three decisions. One is to either approve, the second would be deny, and the third would be approved with conditions. Conditions meaning they've reviewed the application, they've reviewed the drawings, and they've added additional items for the applicant to comply with. That is a recommendation to the Board of Trustees. The second step would be the Board of Trustees. The Board of Trustees will review the application, the drawings, and everything submitted. Then those same steps are followed. So the Board of Trustees can either approve, they can deny, they can approve with conditions. The same guidelines are followed. At that point, if there's any type of appeal process, it will go through the Hampton County Common Pleas Court, and there's steps which I won't get into regarding that, but um, I'm solely on the topic of Zoning Commission and Board of Trustees. Okay, in this case, the uh, uh, specific case is 2019-05 P2. The address is 8608 Blue Ash Road. The request is for PUD2. The applicant is Paul Shirley, Pelican St Studio. The uh, location is 8352, 8354 Blue Ash Road. The proposed use is a mixed-use retail and residential. The site characteristics. The size is a little bit over 9,000 square feet, a little bit less than a quarter acre. The frontage is along Blue Ash Road, about 50 feet. The topography is flat. The existing ISR is unknown. The permitted ISR, meaning our code, will allow them as of right a 0.5, and the proposed ISR is 0.89. The applicant, in this case, is requesting PUD approval consideration. The proposal is to refinish the interior spaces and building exterior facade of the existing structure located at 8608 Blue Ash Road. The proposed use for the first floor would be retail, for the second floor would be residential. This was the information submitted by the architect of record, zoning information, building code information. Um, since this is an existing non-conforming structure, and the intent of the owner in this case is to keep the current building location 
but to increase the existing paved surface to provide additional parking stalls and landscaped areas. This was the, um, and is, the site plan submitted by the architect which outlines the landscaping in the front here that's in the right of way. It also shows the existing building, the building setbacks, proposed parking in the rear lot, in addition to um, the existing buffer, and let's see here, oh, the fence on this side and the existing sign. Now, I pointed this out in my staff report, so I'm hoping all the zoning commission members um, did receive that. There's a couple things that, um, and one of them, very major, that the Hampton County engineers brought up is the right-of-way. And in this case, the applicant has submitted a plan which shows the landscaping, which is called streetscaping in this point, is in the right-of-way. Um, also, there's an existing pylon sign up here that's also in the right-of-way, and part of the fence on the uh, northern part of the property line is also in the right-of-way. The minimum drive aisle that we use is a 12-foot dimension. In this case, the property line between the building, I'm sorry, the distance between the property line and the building is about nine feet. So in order to use this area as a drive aisle, the applicant would need an easement agreement. Uh, Sycamore Township zoning map shows this area as e-retail um, to the north. To the east and west is residential. To the south, you have some additional retail, but you also have um, light industrial down towards Blue Ash Road and um, Cougar Mill. <coughs> the outline of the property is in blue. Again, E retail is the zoning. Um, the property owner is listed. This is all pulled from the auditor's website. And then this is a bird's eye view of the property in question. So as you can see, here's the outline of the property. Here's the property line itself. It does have some vegetation in the rear that they do intend to use as part of their buffer requirements. And then here's a front elevation of the uh, building itself. Here's the elevation to the north showing that fence, which I spoke of earlier being in the uh, public right of way and then also the monument sign, which is also in the public right-of-way. So the public right-of-way comes somewhere back here where you have the utility poles and the sidewalk. Um, this is the distressed front parking lot. Just an enlarged view of the fence and the um, pylon sign. This is the area between the two buildings, this being the existing um, applicant we have in front of us. This is another property owner, and that distance that I spoke of earlier, this is about 12 feet, and it's also about 12 feet at the rear of the property um, of the buildings. The applicant is proposing to remove this set of stairs and the deck and this um, CMU area and put the entrance into the back. <coughs> and then here's the rear yard, a lot of vegetation. And I'll entertain any questions. Okay, thank you, Mr. Holbert. Anyone have any questions for Mr. Holbert? Can you go back to the right of what the uh, photos that show the right of what, please, and the sign in the front front parking area? So that one's good. So the right of way line, as we look at this picture, would actually be to the right of the high line sign. Yeah, let me go back to the architectural site plan because he did locate the um, the sign itself. So. Yeah. Here's the indication of the pylon sign, and then there's the indication of the fence. So it's a little bit beyond that. So as we go back to that um, side, so I would say it's probably somewhere as a guesstimate right there. Right. I'd say within a foot of that area. So this whole area from where my point area is up is all public right of way. Okay, and the fence probably belongs to the property owner next door? Um, I'm unsure of that. Based on our current code and the requirements for a fence and how it's to face, the finished side is to face the adjoining property owner. But that doesn't mean it wasn't yeah. installed improperly by the next door neighbor. Okay. And no cars squeeze between the buildings to get to the rear yard as it's configured now. Um, 
I would say that is correct. With this area now, it would be very difficult to get a, a vehicle through there. That's not to say they couldn't do it. It would just be very... I wouldn't want to put my kids behind the wheel to try to squeeze through that parking lot. That drive out. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, to uh, hear it, uh, more technical, I guess, uh, when you introduced the case, the address you were reading off of Village Road was different from what we have published, I think, uh, on the staff report, 8608. Yeah. Okay. You read off a different number. Did I? Just to clarify. Yeah. Oh, we did. Yeah, it is 8608. Okay, all right. Thank you. And then uh, secondly, the um, access drive being one lane, um, what is, how does that get addressed within our code? Because we typically do not see a, a one lane drive on cases that we're hearing. So. Correct. Um, this is a challenge. One, because it's an existing non-conforming. It's not a legal non-conforming because we haven't classified it as non-conforming yet. Um, so it's as if the applicant's not planning on changing the building. They're not doing an addition. They're not doing a reduction. They're wanting to use the space as it is. <clears throat> and they're ordered to use that first floor as retail. They need parking. Well, this whole front area does not meet any requirements as far as the parking. So their only choice was to actually put it in the back or get easements from the railroad, which are typically not the um, easiest thing to do. So it, it's one of those things they would need a variance from this board for and, and also the board of trustees relief. But we have no provisions in our code at all for a, a one lane or two way single lane package. I mean, we break it down, but it's all based on if it's a single lane or if it's two way traffic. So in this case, it has to be two-way traffic because any traffic that goes in this area is going to come out. So it's not one way. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Is the issue that makes it non-conforming just a setback? Um, everything that I listed in my staff report makes it non-conforming. I mean, there are so many items with this building and um, this was one of those cases where this building was approved 50 years ago, and we took over zoning in yeah. 2000. So our codes that have came into play since then, if it's non-conforming, you can still use that structure. We're not going to make you stop your use. But once it's stopped, any new use needs to conform with the current zoning. So signage, for example, parking requirements. Um, the use of the space and so on. So now it, it was not used for multiple years. Somebody's wanting to use it now. Everything about it needs to conform unless they get relief from the Zoning Commission and the Board of Trustees. And they're, are they going to use that particular property on the second floor like an apartment then? Their intent and based off of their application, yes. Because I believe back then you know, when it was originally it was a bar, and I think they probably had an apartment there at one time. <clears throat> so they're not changing anything, but basically, other than the uh, re redesigning and re uh, decorating the place because it's been an eyesore yeah. for many years. Yep. <clears throat> it's a challenging site. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, if there's anyone here from the applicant, if you step up to the uh, table with a microphone, give us your name and your affiliation and any comments that you wish to make. You can take a seat if you wish. Did you have any comments? Was, was the staff report made available to you? Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Do you have any comments about any of the issues that Mr. Holbert had raised in the in the staff report? Any question that I had on the staff report, I directed to my architect, Paul Shirley, and um, we will address those accordingly. Okay. Uh, Mr. Shirley, did you wish to make any comments here? If you, again, if you would give us your name for the record. Paul Shirley with Pelican Studio. Okay. Um, and to the way that uh, has been explained by Mr. Holder, um, everything about the site has been an extreme challenge. Um, when Ms. Tiffany Davis uh, purchased the property, she purchased it for the intent of establishing a retail on the first floor, commercial on the second floor, not to change the use or anything. And um, the existing parking in the front is obviously in unsafe condition. And so our steps in uh, the wider drive along the front. Actually, can you keep it back on that? Really? Okay. Right there. So our intent is this line is actually the curb line. It's, there's no curb there. It's a painted white line. <coughs> Uh, and then we have the sidewalk along here. So if, if we look at it, because we are so pinched in the front here with our um, building, that, that if we took from the white line back to our building, that gave us about 30 foot of distance for a vehicle to pull off, pull in here while another vehicle was possibly coming through here. And then while that vehicle comes through here, it can stop stage here while this vehicle then continues on back. So we're providing as much spaces as possible within the confines of the property, and we're trying to improve the safety of people turning in as well as people going out, as opposed to leaving it all parking and somebody backing out onto the road and moving off and going forward. So what we put here we feel is much safer condition um, and given the fact that without uh, a variance this property is is useless it's not able to be used for its intended purpose there isn't anything that could be put on the property I mean raise the building can't put anything else back on the property that would allow all the confines of, of what this property is required. First off, we require 100 foot width. We don't have it required 20,000 square feet. We have nine. This, this property is not usable in its um, state. So. Is there an intention to remove the pylon sign or anything of that nature? At this point, no. Because at this point, Hamilton County may own that property, but they have not informed us that we need to remove it. Are you familiar with who is the owner of the fence? I'm not. So you don't know if you... We had the property surveyed and the property appears on uh, the, the pet people property. The, the wood prop, uh, fence appears on the property uh, adjacent to ours. But as Mr. Holbert says, the way that it's installed, it's installed as though it's <coughs> fence. Where, where, where the drive aisle is located, have you approached the adjoining property owner about acquiring an easement uh, to get gain an additional, I guess, about three feet? We have not, we have not uh, made contact with them, yet. but we know who we know who they are, and we know what our charge is. <coughs> <laughs> Once you get to the rear yard, is it maneuverable to get in and out of the spaces and then pull back out as well? We have the 19 feet um, of, of where the parking spaces are in the, on the bottom right. part of the property, and we have 24 feet to back up in one movement okay. and pull forward and out in the other motion. So, yes. Could you show me where you intend to put the stairs in the back relative to the parking? Yes. So there's already um, one door out of the, the first floor retail that's in this location. So we are uh, proposing a new landing here. We have the current uh, door on this face here. We would simply uh, extend a corridor down this side and have the landing 
along this backside and throw the uh, people down this side. And then this is where the handicapped parking space would be and the access aisle there. So um, you're coming off in an area where there's no real traffic. So they would be entering for the retail establishment and the <coughs> apartment there? It's possible to bring in this as the, the use, but until we have a tenant, we are unsure as to what we would do. There is, yes, there is 12 foot wide here. We only need eight foot to get a vehicle there. Um, yes, if my son were driving too, I would not want him driving down there, but, but there is possibility of, of painting uh, a walk strip here and bringing somebody in the front so they can park in the back and walk around the front, but we can bring them into the back way as well. And dumpsters and things of that nature? Have you... uh, we have not secured the spot for that yet, but, but we have uh, all of this could be paving area and, and could we relocate some of the paving here? Um, right, right now these are two spaces for the, re uh, the residential and then these eight spaces would be for the business use group there. Um, and if we needed, I know we need to, but we would take one of those spots away and turn that into where the dumpster is and screen it and work out any trade of additional parking we would need. We will share, share parking. Any other questions to the applicant? Thank you, Mr. Shirley. <coughs> um, anything else, Mr. Shirley, Ms. Davis? Please. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. If there's anyone in the audience who wishes to speak either for, against, or anything about the application, again, if you would step up to the uh, microphone and give us your name and affiliation. Ms. Davis, if you want to. They keep the seat, and uh, we'll let anybody else who wants to come up and talk about it. Okay. Um, thank you very much. If there are no other comments or questions, uh, anyone care to make any motion with regard to uh, case number 2019-05-P2? Consider case number 2019-05-P2. Second. Second. 